I'm all about data-driven self-optimization. Today, I've got the Muse S Athena in front of me, which is a first of its kind wearable combining three different biofeedback technologies into one device. If you wanna know if this $475 device can really upgrade your brain, your stress, your sleep, and a whole lot more, stick around. I'll share my experience with it, the pros, the cons, and what you should know before considering purchasing this device. First of all, the device itself is made by a company called Interaxon, and this company has been developing brain training tools for over a decade now. In fact, they have over 500,000 people using their Muse device, and they've trained their AI so far on over a billion minutes of sessions. What makes the Muse S Athena their latest device special is that it's the first wearable that contains three different sensors that each enable different forms of biofeedback. Biofeedback is the process of taking your body's cues and converting those into audio or light, in this case audio, so that your body learns to self-regulate more effectively and reach and maintain desired states. Among the first and most accessible and most common types of biofeedback is something called heart rate variability biofeedback or heart coherence training. And essentially it uses PPG sensors to measure your heartbeat and your heart rate variability and based on those metrics to help your body reach a state of coherence, which is the optimal state to be in for health and performance and overall well-being. Then it also has classic neurofeedback sensors. Like almost every neurofeedback device, Muse Athena contains EEG sensors, which detect your brainwave activity between alpha and gamma power bands. This modality is used for all kinds of things from improving focus, to enhancing sleep, deepening meditations, and correcting dysfunctional or suboptimal brain activity. This underlying technology is what's most commonly used in neurofeedback clinics, albeit with much more high-end expensive gear. In the Muse system, this is called mind training, and in the app, at the end of your session, you get a breakdown of all kinds of different scores. One of the more interesting scores is called your peak alpha frequency. You can get this with a Muse Premium subscription, and what it tells you is where your brainwave alpha frequency is highest in power and amplitude in the 8 to 12 hertz band of alpha frequency. This is the same metric used in a lot of research, and it's a core mechanism to track progress and cognitive health over time. It's typical to see that decrease with age, especially with lifestyles that include alcohol, poor sleep, and high stress loads. One of the issues that most EEG neurofeedback systems have is that they are sensitive to non-native electromagnetic frequencies. Health context aside, the body runs on tiny, very low power, intricate electrical signals. When you have wireless devices emitting, in comparison, much higher amounts of these wireless electrical signals, that can interfere with the accuracy of the sessions. That's one of my big frustrations with a device called the Sensei, that it is very sensitive to these signals, and as a result, it can take a while to get a clean signal, but that's important so that you train the right thing. Otherwise, you might be wasting your training session or worse. Unfortunately, when I tested the Muse, I don't recommend this, but I put my head and the Muse and an EMF meter I have right up next to a Wi-Fi router and it still got a signal just fine. So either they have a really advanced algorithm to filter out that background noise, or it just doesn't tell you. But either way, when you're doing EEG neurofeedback, make sure that you're not right next to any powerful wireless devices. That was technology number two within this thing. And the third technology within Muse Athena is called FNIRS, Functional Near Infrared Spectroscopy. FNIRS specifically measures blood in the prefrontal cortex, the part of the brain responsible for executive function and decision-making and impulsivity or lack thereof. And this technology measures the blood flow specifically in that part of the brain. By doing that, you can train, as they call it, mental strength or the ability to persist 
and focus for longer and longer periods of time. It's a newer form of biofeedback and has a lot less research behind it than EEG or even HRV biofeedback, but it's still useful. And the other device I know that contains it has FNIRs and no other abilities other than FNIRs. One major advantage of FNIRs is that unlike EEG, it's much easier to get a connection and maintain that signal. You just have the one sensor right here and it goes directly on your forehead, doesn't require water, and is very easy and fast to set up. And the way it works is it calibrates to your breath, and then after a breath calibration process of about 45 seconds, you stare into your phone and focus on the virtual horizon. And when you maintain that, the owl flies, and when you lose concentration, the owl starts to descend and go down towards the ground. The goal being to keep the owl flying throughout the entire session. It gets easier with practice, and also if you do something that gets your blood flowing beforehand, such as exercise or a walk, that can also make the session a whole lot easier. So one of the best practices around all biofeedback is to be as consistent as possible with it. If you train usually in the morning, train at the same time. If you train in the afternoon or evening, try and sequence it so that you're keeping as many variables as the same. And the progress you're seeing is actual progress and not just variability from your routine. If you're finding this interesting so far, I wrote a written review of my experience with Muse and some of the mini experiments I ran. Whenever there's a new update or I come across something new, I update that article. So I will put that in the description for this video. Go ahead and check it out and let me know your thoughts. Now, one of the big selling points of the Athena that I haven't been able to experiment with is the sleep tracking. Because of the proximity to your brain, unlike rings and smartwatches, which have to approximate your brain waves based on heartbeat and blood flow, the Muse Athena actually can directly measure brain waves. Now, I haven't used this feature a single time for several reasons. First, I don't love the idea of sleeping with a device emitting Bluetooth all night directly on my head. In order to use the Muse in general, you must attach headphones to your device and the headphones go in your ears and then you have to have your device somewhere next to you. And to me, having something around my head while I sleep, as well as headphones in, all the while emitting Bluetooth, just didn't appeal to me very much. Plus, they have an LED light on here that's blue, unfortunately. And so if you're into sleep hygiene, that blue light can slightly disrupt your melatonin production and actually paradoxically interfere with sleep. They do have a feature called Digital Sleeping Pill, which I was excited to test out, but didn't get to for those reasons. And the way that works is it reads your brain waves and when you start coming out of sleep, waking up, the soundscape changes to bring you back into a deeper state of sleep. That's the one part of this device I have not tried. Some of my other grievances with Muse in the couple months that I've been using it, first, that the battery indicator isn't always reliable. That might have been resolved by a recent software update, but I'm not sure. Sometimes it would say I have one or 2% battery left, and then I would do a 30 minute visualization exercise and the device would not die. Clearly I had more than 1%. The app itself can be tricky to navigate when you're first getting started. There's a lot of training and tutorial videos. And really when I first got it, I wanted to just dive in and get started, but it made me watch a bunch of videos before I could actually start training. Something between the app and the device did have some glitches, some bugs initially when I was first getting started. It could have been because the device was brand new and required some firmware updates, or it could be something to do with the connection between the device and the app. But when I was first getting started, I did notice that there'd be some strange disconnections or inability to get a clean signal on the FNIR sensor especially. But over the last handful of months, those problems seem to have mostly just gone away and I can reliably start and complete sessions now. Perhaps my number one disappointment with Muse though was the inability to access a lot of the features without a premium membership. In order to get your Alpha Peak cognitive score, you need premium. To get your brain recovery score, or essentially how restorative your session was to your brain, you need premium. The 500 plus guided meditations, programs, and courses all require premium too. 
One of my unexpected favorite features is the ability to visualize brain waves in real time. Now, I test a lot of different things, nootropics, vagus nerve stimulators, light therapy systems, and I wanna know the impact they're having on my brain waves, specifically alpha, theta, and gamma. Up until now, it's been very difficult to do that, but Muse has a feature that lets you track and visualize in real time what's going on before and after you apply a therapy. It does require a lot of stillness, and especially with FNIRs, any movement will completely skew the results, but that feature alone made Muse worth it for me. Another thing I like is that it's very small. I can easily put it in my pocket. When I travel, I bring this on the plane with me and I can easily crank out a session anytime, any place. The other system I have called Sensei, I'll do a comparison between Sensei and Muse at some point soon because they're both awesome systems for different reasons, but I can't really travel with this because it has a carrying case and it takes up a lot more space. I can also use Muse offline and train even if I don't have cell service or Wi-Fi. But when I'm training with this, it does require that I have not only my phone present with me, but also that I have a pair of headphones so that I can get the cues that Muse is giving me. It's impressive that the Muse team managed to fit seven EEG sensors in this one little device, and the fact that they also were able to cram in FNIRs makes it an overall decent value because you're getting three different biofeedback technologies all for one price, and you can access and use all of them without the monthly membership. Some of the other unique metrics that Muse shows you that the others don't are things like your posture and some insights into your breathing. Since I first started investigating the world of biofeedback, a lot of companies have come and gone, shut down, no longer have products accessible to consumers. With Muse, you know that they're gonna be around and I've found that their support is active and responsive and helpful and the company continues to ship both software and firmware updates. So this technology is not gonna be outdated anytime soon. One other key feature that requires premium and might be worth upgrading for, for it alone is the ability to play back your own music, your own tracks, your own meditations, and then layer on Muse's neurofeedback on top of that. So the way it works is you choose a song from your preferred audio player, perhaps Spotify or Apple Music, Insight Timer, Calm, any of those, and then you start a session in Muse and it layers the cues over your third-party audio, turning anything into a biofeedback session. That's another cool feature that I haven't seen elsewhere, though it does require premium. 2025 seems to be a big year for Muse. They've announced several partnerships, one with a company called Alpha Beats, letting you use binaural beats to entrain alpha brainwaves. There's also a third party called MindLift that adds a layer above Muse for coaches and practitioners to utilize the hardware in a more professional clinical setting. If you want to get advanced, there's also a third party tool called Mind Monitor, and you can use that to stream EEG and FNIRS data and even export it to different file types. So what's cool about Muse is that it's an open ecosystem, and because of that, it's actually been the subject of a bunch of different studies and unlike a lot of the devices the older versions of Muse especially show some promising results that's not to say that the new one doesn't but it's new so there's less research on it specifically but it has all the tech specs of a better system anyway so because it's used in clinical research and Muse actually has some white papers showing imp impressive benefits for focus and sleep Muse even led a 1 2021 study used Muse and the participants reported better stress resilience, focus, clarity, emotional regulation, sleep quality, calmness, and relaxation. So is this device right for you? I view this as a solid choice for the serious self-quantifier, sleep optimizers, neurohackers, and neurofeedback practitioners, and anyone who wants an affordable and research-backed way to get into biofeedback. From my own testing and research, this seems like the best value product in the market because you're getting three distinct technologies in one portable device at about half or a third the price of some of the other systems. Now, if you only want to do one particular thing like EEG neurofeedback, you don't need to track sleep, you don't care about FNIRs, 
there are better, cheaper options for you. For example, even the Muse 2 is about half the price, so it might be worth considering. If you are very sensitive to electrosmog or all you care about is heart rate variability biofeedback, there's other options for you and this probably isn't the best. If you want to pick up a Muse, either the 2 or this one, which is the Athena, the code URBAN will save you 15% on your order. And by the way, if you decide to go for premium, it often goes on sale, so I would wait until you get a good deal on it. What do you want tested next? Drop your questions below and I'll do a follow-up deep dive. If you want to see how this stacks up to some of the other devices, I have written an article comparing and contrasting a bunch of different devices and neurotechnologies on the market. If that kind of thing interests you, check out the article in the description below. And until next time, be an outlier.